The Challenge of the Yukon. A king and you husky. King, the swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered... And justice ruled triumphant. Dan McGregor's cabin was in one of the most isolated stretches of the Yukon wilderness. Far off the trail, it was a long, tedious journey to civilization, even in good weather. In the blast of the terrible winter, it was almost impossible to travel. Inside, the cabin was warm and cozy. Dan's young wife, Mary, busied herself putting dishes away, while Dan and an old sourdough, Clancy O'Connell, sat talking before the heartening blaze of a good fire. Dan held a young baby on his knee. Clancy broke the friendly silence that had fallen on the happy group. (laughs) Yes, sir, by God, that young and sure is growing. (laughs) Just look at how he's watching you, Dan. (laughs) Bright as a button, aren't you, son? (laughs) You know, Clancy, I was afraid of having him and Mary stay up here. Oh, there's a man for you. The children weren't raised in the wilderness before. I'll wager you won't find a healthier-looking baby anywhere. You're right there, Mary. <laughs> I declare, I ain't ever seen a smarter-looking tyke. He'll be a rich man someday. <laughs> you bet your life he'll be. Uh, say, Dan. Yeah? Last time you was to town, did you see anything of McLean? Mm-hmm. Did he have anything to say about the mine? Just asked me how it was coming. You gave him all the details, I reckon. Well, sure. If it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't be so well off this winter. I don't mind telling you I was ready to give up when he staked me. Ah. You got something on your mind, Clancy. Might as well spill it. No, I I was just thinking, that's all. Thinking what? I've been knocking around up here for more years, and I'd like to remember, Dan. And you can take my word for it, a man meets all kinds, good and bad. I always did think McLean was one of the bad ones. He's mighty good to me. Well, why shouldn't he be? You paid him back five times over for what he ever staked you. It's none of my business, though. Hey, that's funny. Visitors. Here, take the baby, Mary. People don't usually go visiting this time of year, son. Hi there, Dan. McLean, what brings you up here? Oh, just came up with the boys for a spell. Send to the dogs, will you, Pete? Sure. Here are you, Huskies. Uh, don't mind if you come in, do you, Dan? Well, no. Hiya, boys. Oh, Mr. Gregory. Hiya. Hiya. Ah, mighty comfortable place you got here. First time you've been up here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I guess you're pretty well fixed for supply. Now, we took care of that a long time ago. We've got enough caribou meat to see us through the winter. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. Now, you're better fixed than anyone this side of Melville. How's that? The supply boats ain't come through yet. Oh. Yeah, it's bad. Bad. That ain't half of it. We have plenty here. If you men need food, we'll be glad to share some of our supplies with you. Sure. But, uh, that ain't exactly what I had in mind, Miss McGregor. If it isn't food you want, Mr. Oh, McClain. it's food we want, all right. But we don't aim to take no share of what you got here. Well, you're welcome to it. Uh, we're taking all of it, Dan. You're what? Yeah, you heard me, old timer. He's joking, Dan. He can't possibly I never it. joke. Dan knows that. Why, that dirty swine, I always knew he wanted to reach for that gun, Grandpa. (gasps) You just do what I say. You're holding the gun, Mac. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Well, me and the boys have come a long way. A mighty long way, just to make you a proposition. A proposition, he calls it, yes. We started out with all the supplies we could get our hands on. Buying supplies, of course. Come on, McLean, get to the point. Yeah, boss, cut out the gab and give it to him straight. Shut up, I'm running this outfit. Now that we're here, we're willing to let you and Mrs. McGregor have a day's supplies for you and the dogs. Now, wait a minute. We're not leaving Miss Carroll. You're leaving right now. But the baby... That's your concern, not mine. But it's murder. 
You know we can't reach the trading post. Why, it'll take us three days. My, 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 my. Now, ain't that too bad. I'm sorry, Dan. That's all the food we can spare. You can go on short rations, you know. We ain't budging, you sputtering coyote. We'll stay here if I Who have to take... anything about you going? Oh, you're staying here. I figure we need a hand to take care of washing dishes and the like. What? You better start getting your dogs ready, McGregor. You got a long trip ahead of you. A sharp wind whipped Sergeant Preston mercilessly as he urged his team over the trail. Ahead of the pack ran the great dog King, alert and watchful. Watching him, the Mountie smiled, for he knew the wilderness held no terror for King. Uh, he's glad to have a job to do. Seems to enjoy running against the wind. On, King! On, you huskies! We've got a job to do this time, all right. Melville doesn't soon get some supplies. But... What is it? What is it? What's wrong, King, huh? Ho, oh, you huskies! Ho! Oh. oh, now, look. We don't want to waste any time, boy. This trail is... Very well, King, you win. Which way, huh? <laughs> Don't pull me, I'm coming. Can't see a thing, this wind is... Oh, over the crest of that hill, huh, fella? Well, we'll have a look. A man and woman. Now, who in the world would be on the trail in weather like this? You go back and bring the dogs, King. That's right, boy. I'm going down there. With a sickly-looking fire like that, they need help. Hello there! It's Dan McGregor and Mary. And she's holding their young baby. I don't know who you are, stranger, but we're sure glad you've come. Dan, it's Sergeant Preston. Mary and Dan, what in the world? Oh, 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 no, wait a minute, Mary. Last time I saw Dan in town, he told me you were all set to hold in for the winter. What happened? We're all set. But Mac McLean came up to the cabin yesterday and drove us out. We've used up what food we had. Well, I, I have some supplies on the sled. We'll add more wood to the fire and have some ready for you in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I want you to tell me about McLean. It was shortly after dark. In Dan McGregor's cabin, the fire burned brightly. Mac McLean paced the floor restlessly with his hands in his pockets, outlining a recently hatched scheme to his men. Clancy, the rugged old prospector, washed at the dishes sullenly. His sharp ears taking in every word of the conversation. Yeah, it was a lucky break for us when you spotted the morning star down the river, Pete. Yeah. We take over the supplies she's carrying. We can name our own price in Melville. She's stuck solid. Yeah, she's stuck solid. What could be better? Tell her, I'll tell you what I want you and Lefty to do, Pete. Well, I'm listening. Make your way down to the trail, then get down to where the morning star is and see how many windows are lighted up. Maybe we can get a rough idea how many men are on board. All right. It won't take us more than 15 minutes Make to do sure that. it do. We can't afford to waste much time. All right. Hey, where are you going, Grandpa? Just going out for a breath of fresh air when I don't get in here. Oh, no, you ain't. You were not so busy planning how to keep food from starving mouths, you'd have noticed the fire's burning low and we need wood. You going to get it or do I? All right. could have swore I saw someone moving over in that timber. But I don't see him now. Rotten varmints. I only hope Dan and Mary eat. Hey, what in the... Looks like a dog coming from the trees. Well, I'll be a friendly one, ain't you, boy? Good-looking husky. Hey, what's the... Yeah, looks like a note or something in his collar. Let's see. Seems like... Yeah, it's a pencil. I have to go over here. Got to keep down. Light from the window ought to be enough to read by. I got it from Sergeant Preston. I... Here, boy. I'll send this back with you. And hurry back here before they get suspicious. <laughs> Back in the cabin a half hour later, Clancy puffed silently on his pipe, while Mac McLean peered anxiously out of the window. Seems like they ought to be back by now, Mac. Yeah, the darn fools. What's keeping them? 
The blasted wolves get on my nerves. Sounds like a whole pack. Yeah, you dad. Daft nothing. Pete and Lefty'd be back here by now. If... I'll lay you ten to one they ran into trouble. A pack of it. Come on, I've had enough of this waiting around. Them wolves are mighty hungry this time of year, McLean. And they ain't particular about their meat, neither. Shut up, and I want your opinion, I'll ask you for it. Get your gun, Red. You too, Slim. I don't like this. Man. I ain't asking you if you do or not. I'm bored in the morning star, see? The day after tomorrow, we'll start for Melville with enough supplies to sell to set us up for life. As the three men left the cabin, sharply silhouetted against the snow, they were watched by Sergeant Preston. King stood at his master's side, every muscle tense, his keen eyes following the progress of McLean and his men. You were right, Sergeant. Here they go, the three of them. Out to look for our friends here. It's a good job of gagging them, then. Uh, I'd like to rainbow them. Oh, never mind. I'll get what's coming to them when we get them back to Melville. Clancy was right about the morning star being down the river. Look, Dan. The back door of the cabin. It's Clancy. He's heading this way. Go to meet him, King. <laughs> we'll wait till they're far enough away from the cabin for me to circle around them. Then, Mary, you go back into the cabin with the baby. We can't risk keeping you out in the cold any longer. Bless me. This ain't the best luck I ever struck. Quick. We have no time to lose. Clancy, you stay here and guard the prisoners. The prisoners? How'd you... Oh, don't worry none, Sergeant. I'll take good care of them both. Come with me, Dan. Ready, King? Good luck to you. Thanks. We'll need it. There they are, Sergeant. Yes, I see them. They're making slow progress. All right, King. Start howling like a wolf. Come on, Dan. Let's see how good our imitations are. Down, King. Duck, Dan. Well, that was close. Must have sounded like the real thing. Only one man fired, Dan. And I'm sure it wasn't McLean. Yeah, see? He's turning on those two like a savage. The morning star must be just around that bend. If your plan works, It's got to work. Come on, Dan. Hug the protection of these rocks. King, you circle around to that big rock. When I call, you charge them. Understand, fella? Oh, good boy. Off now. All right, Dan. Open up on them. Get them, King. Get them. Hey, what's that? Shoot him. Shoot him. Get away from me. Shoot him. Oh, my belly. Tore it out of my head. Come on, Dan. Rush them. Here come the man from the Morning Star. All right, King. Down, boy. Down, fella. You, throw down your guns. Throw them down. That wolf's making off with him. Look again, McLean. It's no wolf. Hey, what's all this about? I mean, heard the shots. Captain Oakes? That's right. Sergeant Preston of the Mounted Police. Yeah. These men were planning to force their way on board your boat to steal the supplies. We thought when we heard the gunfire, you'd come to investigate, trapping them between two fires. Well, it seems like you had the situation pretty well under control before we even got here, Sergeant. It's a mighty good thing you stopped them. We've been stuck for so long, we'd have probably welcomed them as a committee from there. You're under arrest, McLean. You and your men. It was nothing short of an attempted murder when you turned the McGregors out to freeze on the trail. Gee, is a cabin in this wild-looking country? Within walking distance, Captain. We'll carry some of your supplies to Melville on sleds. They're badly needed. I know they are. But we've been helpless here. Got stuck in a sandbar on the river, and by the time we got loose from that, the freeze set in. You sure ain't running the corner to schedule this trip. On your feet, McLean. No, uh, not so. You're heading back to town. A dog. And I thought it was a wolf. Uh, your friends thought the same thing. But we managed to capture them without any gunplay. Yes, King, you've done a good job. We've done all we set out to do and more. With your help, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you each week at this same time, originated in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bob Height speaking.